Once there was a young woman named Jean Grey, a mutant telekinetic and telepath, a founding member of Xavier's School for the Gifted, and of the heroic mutant-powered team, the X-Men. Now, there is only Phoenix. And now for her, for those she loves and who love her, perhaps even for the entire world, nothing will ever be the same again. She is now demonstrating, testing her powers in the massive, extravagant lab of Dr. Moira McTaggart, a woman second only to Charles Xavier as an authority on genetic mutation. She does not scare easy, but today, looking upon a woman she has come to know like a daughter, she is very afraid indeed. How much longer, Moira? That's enough, Jean. I have all that I need, I think. Jean falls from the hovering position she had been in, inside a large metal chamber, and falls to the cold steel floor, her powers receding, the bird of fire that was all around her gone. So too was her phoenix costume, returning into her flesh and leaving her bare. Moira looks away as Jean covers herself in a white robe. Sorry that took so long. Oh, don't worry about it. Phoenix used to drain me. I'd grow tired after using my powers. But since I recharged in the sun, I feel like I could burn for years. Yes, feeding on the sun. That's, uh, something. Only a drop. I wanted more. I really wanted more. But I knew that if I did, well, I, I wouldn't have a home to return to. Indeed. So, uh, it's been a week. I came here for answers. Surely you have some by now. Jean, I don't think I even know the questions. Come on, tea time. Jean dresses in her casual attire, and the women now return to the research lab's main house. Don't you think it's time you should contact your friends at the school? Contact Scott? I will. I, I just... I'm scared, Moira. Scared of whatever it is that I've become. I feel like my use for these gifts were used up when I destroyed the Macron crystal. Sometimes I wish I had stayed dead. Now what am I? What will I become? Outside, an elderly man approaches the labs. He is a hateful man indeed. One that had come to this island from the mainland chasing stories of a so-called freak lab. He has considered bringing others, but decided it was too risky, that they would be spotted. But now, he alone has found it, and wonders what to do about it. But before he can even take a picture for his fellow hate mongers, a being approaches from behind. He does not see it until it's too late. No! Get away from me! No! <laughs> the man grows silent as his body is overtaken by green light. When it dims, it does so all but for his eyes. And when those no longer glow, the man's entire posture changes. I should have taken you, Moira. But that woman is here. That powerful being. If only I felt like I had the power to overcome her. No, I don't think so. This body will have to do... for now. Inside the training facility known as the Danger Room, the X-Men are at that moment putting the new upgrades to the test. Storm flies with grace between hoops. Colossus uses his steel might to hold up over three tons of mass. Nightcrawler teleports to and from the walls, and Wolverine puts his mighty adamantium claws to the test. All while Cyclops yells orders. Okay, Colossus, your challenge is to get out from under that hydraulic ram before it crushes you. Better hurry. Its force doubles every 15 seconds. Need a hand, PD? Thank you, little comrade. This is my test. Yeah, we're supposed to be a team, right? That means we help each other out. Let's see how well these new toys work. 
Wolverine slashes at the walls, looking to destroy the power circuits of the danger room itself. Sorry, Wolverine. Better luck next time. Scott presses a button on his console from the overwatching control platform and watches with amusement as a massive blast of water throws Wolverine across the room. <laughs> he falls, grumbling and soaking. Enjoy your shower, mein Freund? Yeah, keep laughing, fuzzball. Your turn will come. As if on cue, the wall beneath him begins to fall away, turning on an axis beneath. Oh no you don't! Not that easy, Cyclops. Not when I can just teleport away. Yeah, but what if you can't? Cyclops presses a button, and a massive blast of sonic beams hit Kurt Wagner. Ah, I can't hear myself think. I can't concentrate to port. Well, this is just sad. <sighs> Shut it down, Sean. <sighs> pathetic, people. Really pathetic. You either overreacted to the danger room, or you treat it like a joke. Wolverine, Nightcrawler, you're both dead. And nobody helped Colossus a bit. Yeah, if I'm so dead, how come I'm still breathing? If this were real... But it ain't! That's the point! It's a damn game! And I don't jump through hoops for nobody, Summers. I handled myself just fine when I was on my own, and I could do it again. Wolverine... I need a brew. You want me, Summers? You know where to find me. I swear to God, one of these days. I know he can be a shite, but don't forget what he's done for us all. I don't know. You're all just such strong people, individual people. I just don't know how to make us as effective as a team as my old one. But we have to get better. We got lucky, real lucky. But eventually that luck is gonna run out. Storm away in the Outer Hebrides Islands near Scotland's rugged northwest coast. In an upstairs room of the Red Lion Inn is a man who calls himself Jason Wingard. The name is as false as the man himself. Mm, I've been patient with you, Miss Grey. The stakes my partners and I are playing for are too high for any of us to risk spoiling things with a hasty or careless move. You don't know it, my dear, but I've been with you ever since you left Xavier's Reach. I took on many faces. A middle-aged priest. Pardon me, child, but you seemed troubled. Anything I can help you with? And later, as you ran from those who love you, I filled that emotional void within you with as many faces as have been days since your return to Earth. And soon I have come to know you better than you know yourself. <laughs> oh, we've met before, but now as this Jason Wingard, I can mold you, transform you. Just as you transform from yourself to Phoenix, I will make you are my Black Queen. Jean? Jean, hey. Jean, you okay? Jean Grey is snapped out of a trance by Moira's aide, Jamie Madrox. She is back in the house on Muir Island. Hmm? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I just... Daydreaming is all. Sorry, Jamie, you were saying... Meanwhile, below... Oh, Jean. Jean, if only I knew what to do with you. What to call you. For such a young woman as yourself to have so much power... Are you really even you at all? Or a being that those aliens made you? She stops suddenly, noticing what looks to be a blackened footstep. And another. Tracks lead off down the hall, each having scorched the carpet below as though ablaze. She follows them to a sealed, thick door marked Mutant X. She checks it, looking through the viewing door window and sees no one inside. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, no, no! Moments later, she runs into the lounge where Jean and Jamie Madrox are sitting. Moira! What is it? What's the matter? He's gone! I, he's gone! Who's gone? My, my mutant ex! I checked the door security and it looks like the battle here with Magneto somehow has damaged it. I had to have been at... Everything here is metal! How could I have been so stupid as not to check? Oh, God. Who's mutant ex? No time. We need to call Charles now. Charles Xavier sits alone in his study in contemplation. He remained when she left, 
but now is thinking it would have been best if he had left with her. I understand, Lalandra. I do. You had an empire to run, and they called like they said they would. But with so many mature adults here, and with Scott stepping up as a true leader, I find myself without a place at my own school. Yes, Xavier's school for gifted- Charles? Charles, you need to send everyone you have now! Moira, the X-Men have only just returned from being halfway around the world. He's out, Charles. His security was damaged and he's escaped. We need to stop him before he hurts anyone else. They will be right there. No other words are needed. Xavier explains all that his team of mutants need to know and sends them on their way to Muir Island. Back on Muir Island, Jean and Jamie Madrox, the multiple man, gear up for battle themselves. Whoever this dangerous mutant is will find him. We aren't going to let him get away like I did Magneto. Jean is about to take off when the world shifts, changes and forms from the world she knows into that of an 18th century Regency manor house. Uh, what the... She peers down and sees herself in an ornate dress, true to her surroundings. What is this? I'm going mad. A thousand questions flare up, but before she can ask them, the world returns to her own time. Hey, there's that look again. Uh, you sure you're okay? Uh, I, I will be. Let's... Uh, go... Jean! Moira and Madrox jump with a start as Jean collapses to the ground, losing consciousness. Oh no! Oh, I knew it! Her power is draining her after all! What else can go wrong today? Within an hour, the supersonic plane named the Blackbird touches down on the tarmac at Muir Island. Okay, we don't know what this mutant is or what they can do, so stay sharp and be ready for anything. If we're lucky, he's still on the island. The group agree and head indoors, splitting up and beginning the search for Mutant X. The first to find anyone in the facility is Storm. Jamie Madrox. Hey. Where are the others? Where is Moira? Uh, she's in the med bay with Jean Grey. Storm, was it? Yeah, Storm. I'd remember that pretty face anywhere. What in the name? Oh, yeah. Uh, guess you never saw my mutant power before. <laughs> Moira calls me the multiple man. I will multiply myself. <laughs> there are 12 of me searching the island for any sign of them. I see. Wait, did you say Jean Grey? Yeah, she's here. Didn't you know that? Oh, no, you didn't. Is she okay? At that moment, in the medical bay. She'll be fine, Scott. She just overdid it with the tests on her phoenix powers is all. Tests? How long has she been here? A week. I wanted to call and tell you, tell Charles, but... Well, she insisted that she wanted to figure out these powers of hers before she went home. Jean! Cyclops runs up to the bedside of his lover and reaches down to hold her head. Jean Grey's eyes open to see the man she loves. Jason. Oh, Jason, I... I knew... I knew it was you. What? Who's Jason? Before long, the team are assembled around Moira's lounge, drinking well-brewed tea. They have to be connected, Moira. First Jean, and then what happened to me? Just after Moira rang you, I got this... awful feeling. Like the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. Like a part of me was being ripped away. Then... nothing. Yes, but Jean just fainted from exhaustion. She describes no pain. You, on the other hand... Wait, Jamie. Jamie, how many of you did you reform into yourself? Well, there was... Ten. No. Eleven. Wait. Eleven? I made twelve. But you haven't found a body. I have. The group look up as the door opens, and Jean Grey flies into it as Phoenix landing just ahead of them and throwing an ashen corpse to the ground. The man is dressed in the garb of a seaman, a fisherman perhaps, and on every stitch, not a blemish. But the body beneath it was black, sunken, like it had been burned at the stake and left to decompose for several days. Oh, sweet Mary and Joseph. Jean, you should be in bed. I feel fine. 
but look at this man. Who is he? I don't know, but I know what happened to him. Mutant X? Yes. Then what are we waiting for? Let's get after this sucker. Not yet we aren't. Not until we know his strengths, weaknesses, everything. Don't forget what happened with Magneto. I haven't. But I doubt this guy or gal can do what he does. Worse. I've checked all your files, Moira. There's nothing on any mutant X. It's a private matter. Was a private matter. He's killed Moira. We'll kill again. Look at that man. You have to help us before it's too late. It was too late the day he was born. Who is he? My son. As night fell, the being named Mutant X now had taken the boat left by the man who he had become and travelled to another Scottish isle, Stornoway. Once there, the body, the duplicate of Jamie Madrox, grows weak. I am weak. I need to feed again. At that moment, as he walks the cobbled streets, he sees a perfect, handsome and rich-looking target emerging from the shadows of the small town. The man is Jason Wingard. Mutant X uses the shadows as his ally as he approaches the man, reaching out to take his body as he had the others, but... What? It isn't working. He has some kind of shield, some kind of defense. He must be like me, a superior being, a mutant. No, I cannot take this body. I must find another. A little later, down by the docks, some friends bid each other farewell and head for home. It's been quite a while since Ferdy Duncan was this drunk. He knows his wife will read him the riot act the moment he walks in the door. He's wrong. A hand reaches out from the darkness and covers his mouth, grabs him, pulls him into the shadows. He will never see his home or wife again. Ah, good. The shell is young, strong. It will hopefully last much longer. Back at Muir Island, no one gets much sleep that night. Scott Summers tries to get a moment alone with the woman he loves. Jean, we need to talk. Why didn't you come back to the mansion when you returned? I, I am scared, Scott. Scared of what I am. You're Jean. Phoenix is just your powers. No. No, it isn't. It... It's what I am now. The woman you knew, she's dead. Don't talk like that. <laughs> you need to get some sleep. Who is Jason? No one. I was just having a dream is all. Are you sure? If the gene I loved is dead, then maybe you feel like this new you can move on. No, not like that. I... Oh, forget it. Good night, Scott. He thinks of following her, but knows it would not do any good. The next morning, the X-Men and friends assemble. After hearing police reports, they head to Stornoway and find the mummified corpse of the Madrox copy, then follow further reports to the mainland, where they find the abandoned boat. They now stand on the British mainland, four jeeps divided between them for travel, and a map of Scotland on one jeep's hood. I think it's safe to assume that Mutant X crossed over here. He's on the run. The best place for him to hide and where he can find a large supply of host bodies is a big city. In Scotland, that means Inverness, Aberdeen, Glasgow, and Edinburgh. Finding him won't be easy. We don't know what he looks like now, how he's traveling or which way, or even how much of a head start he has. Worse, the professor can't even pick him up on Cerebro. We have a lot of ground to cover, so I'm splitting us up into four search teams with Storm and Phoenix acting as airborne scouts. If anyone spots anything, no matter how trivial, let me know. Let's roll, X-Men. Inside their jeep, Moira McTaggart turns to Cyclops. Suppose he outfoxed us, Scott. Suppose he never left Stornoway. Which is partly why I left Jamie behind to monitor police radio frequencies. If any more mummies pop up, he'll call me. This... this has to be tough, Moira. Oh. He was a beautiful baby and I hate his father, but I loved him. I still do. When his mutant power emerged, it changed him. I, I tried to find a cure. I failed. Weaknesses? Two. He runs through bodies fast. Constantly needs to feed now he's outside the container cage I made for him. 
and metal. He can't penetrate metal, which is how I kept him locked up for so long. Metal can stop him. Metal can kill him. Meanwhile, Phoenix soars in the skies above. I should have told Scott that Mutant X seems invisible to my powers as well. I should have told him a lot of things. But after last night... At that moment, on a nearby hillock, a man watches her through binoculars. Jason Wingard smiles. The X-Men are certainly out in force. Heaven help whoever they are after. In many ways, Phoenix is the most powerful X-Man, yet also the most vulnerable. And for the second time in as many days, Phoenix's world goes suddenly, decidedly, mad. Uh, what? Oh no! Not again! Once more, she finds herself mysteriously transported back to the 18th century. Transformed this time into a noble lady riding to the hounds with Jason Wingard. She's never ridden a horse in her life. Yet she handles the big black stallion beneath her with practiced ease. And, as the horses thunder across the heather, she finds herself accepting this new reality, welcoming it. She is Lady Jean Grey. This is her manor grounds. These men are her guests. One is her love. She soon outstrips the others, becoming the first to reach their prey. Whoa, Satan. Whoa. Sir Jason, the dogs. I'll deal with them, milady. Her pulse quickens at the sight and sound of her. Her thoughts turning to the days and nights to come. Sir Jason Wingard, master of the hunt. He strides towards the pack of dogs and shoes them with his whip. Back, you curs! Back, I say! As the mutts do as commanded, he approaches the downed beast, smiles, and holds it by its antlers. He then takes out a knife and offers it to Lady Jean. We're fortunate indeed, milady. The beast still lives. As the first to run it to the ground, to you goes the honor of administering the Coupe de Grace. Lady Jean Grey jumps down from her steed and takes the knife from him. Thank you, Sir Jason. I say, I can't remember when I've had finer sport, milady. It was a master stroke of yours to suggest we hunt a man playing the role of a stag rather than the animal itself. And indeed, before her lies a near nude man dressed in antlers. Then, as suddenly and as frighteningly as it began, Phoenix's madness ends. For a time, her vision returning to her own time again, and she has landed, the body of the beast-dressed man morphing into that of an ashen, mummified corpse, that of Ferdy Duncan. What? Uh, a man? I was going to kill him. I wanted to kill him, and, and then, oh, what's happening to me? Wait, this is real. This body is real. Mutant X. Elsewhere, not too far away, Nightcrawler sits in his running jeep as a head Wolverine is on the trail. Wolverine! Cyclops is on the radio! Phoenix has found a body of a mummified man! Likes the one back at the labs! Yeah, good for them. Keep the noise down, huh? Got enough hassles following this trail as is without you distracting me. Trail? Cyclops says the body is fresh. Mutant X must have only recently abandoned it. And it's over ten miles away. How could he have gotten from there to here so quickly? My nose don't lie, pal. Those bodies X possesses give off a distinctive scent. We picked it up just before we hit this damn fog. Been following it ever since. And to answer your question, he's getting around the same way we are. In a... car? What the...? Wolverine stops with a start, looking up at a police car right in his path, and a policeman standing before it, and before him. Hold it, laddie. Cobb, where did he come from? I should have spotted his scent. Hey, we've been tracking a lone man in a car. Crawler, trouble! Ah, impressive. You've seen through me, but I'm afraid it won't be enough. Spare yourself needless pain, little man. This will be over before you know it. 
Before Wolverine can react, energy flares up between the two men, and Wolverine finds himself drowning in the psychic attack of Mutant X. Logan fights desperately, but it's no use. He has barely seconds of life left. But then, suddenly... Ah, no. Metal. You're full of it. The whole skeleton of it, bub. So, you don't like metal, huh? How about I give you a taste? At that moment, Nightcrawler charges over the hill, seeing the scene before him. Wolverine, no! Mein God, are you insane? That's a police officer! Stay out of my way, elf! I got this sucker. Tell Psyche I got Mutant X cornered, and I'm gonna end this son of a- Have you now, Wolverine? You call me Mutant X, but I have a better name. I am Proteus, and changing bodies is just one of my powers. I am also the master of reality itself! Wolverine and Nightcrawler open their mouths to yell, but no sound comes out. Instead, everything around them twists and morphs. Imagine a world where no rules exist, where there is no natural order, where nothing is the same from one moment to the next. Ah, my body! It's breaking up and drifting apart! Is this really happening? Or is it all in my mind? As bad as things are for Nightcrawler, they're infinitely worse for Wolverine, whose being is grounded in a physical structure that no longer exists, is defined by senses that are all now lying to him. He tries to hold on. <laughs> only to find nothing, within or without him, to hold on to. Nightcrawler does his best to try to reassure his friend, unaware that, thanks to Proteus, Wolverine perceives his words as drops of orange rain. <laughs> I needed practice in the use of my powers to warp the very fabric of reality. You two mutants make fitting guinea pigs. Away from them, monster. You will not harm them as long as I still live. Storm swoops in to the rescue of her teammates. Her attack is savage, catching Proteus completely by surprise, her massive lightning strike chewing up the landscape around him. That shock and fear cause him to snap reality back to normal. Mutant X, I take it? I cannot attack him directly. He may be evil, but he is also a human being. I will not take his life, but I can prevent his escape. Storm now looks down at him, seeing the policeman's skin scorched from the blast. That actually hurt me. You'll pay for that, witch. Storm never has a chance, as Proteus's power lashes out at her. One instant, everything is fine. The next, she's upside down, and the ground has jumped up to slap her in the face. Oh. Ah. Well, I can't take over Wolverine's shell, and the Blue One's appearance makes him useless to me. But you, woman, are perfect. My shoulder, I think it's sprained. I can't risk flying. He could just smash me into the ground again, or worse. And I cannot leave Wolverine and Nightcrawler at his mercy. No choice. I have to make a stand. Too groggy to generate lightning. I'll try wind instead. The Tempest seems to spring from out of nowhere. At Storm's direction, 100 mile per hour winds hurl themselves down the tiny valley towards Proteus. But although she tries to direct its path, Proteus is not the only one caught in its path. Wolverine! Storm's hurt! We've got to help her! Stay where you are, both of you. Anchor yourselves. This wind will blow you away before you take two steps. She's right, Elf. Hold on, pal. I'm digging in. Hold on and pray. As Nightcrawler holds on to Logan's yellow back for dear life, Wolverine pops his claws again and drives them down into the ground to anchor them both. Around the surface of the glen is stripped clean, down to the bare rock by Storm's terrible elemental fury. She strikes out with everything she has, but in one dreadful moment, she realizes it will not be enough. <laughs> Your body is mine. Logan! We have to help her! I want to, Elf. 
but I just can't. Proteus jumps back as a gunshot almost hits him. He jumps back, then looks up, trying to find the shooter in the hills beside them. Damn it! I can't see anything thanks to this weather. Witch! Ah! Three more shots almost hit him. Atop a nearby knoll, Moira aims and fires with grim determination, driving Proteus away from his helpless prey and out onto open ground. She has the shot. I love you, boy. Moira, no! At the last moment, Scott Summers grabs the gun and points it upwards. The shot misses. What do you think you're doing? Scott, you fool, I had him! Let go! We don't kill Moira. I'm not playing by your rules, or Charles's not this time. Cyclops reels as Moira drives the butt of the gun into his sternum. I don't have time to argue or explain. She drives the gun down into his back, sending Scott to the ground. <clears throat> it may already be too late now. And she is right. Below, the withering police body moves towards Wolverine and Nightcrawler's jeep. I need a new body, but this one's almost used up. But I can't risk taking one of these now. In the few seconds it'll take for me to possess any of these mutants, I'll be completely vulnerable. Better to run and find a safer host. Moira sneers at the sight, but exhales and now turns her attention to her downed friend, knocked out from the second blow. You'll have a mighty goose egg when you wake up, Scott. Sorry about that. I have to do this alone. She now walks back to their own jeep. My son has been heading south since he landed in Scotland. I think I know where he's going. Got to be there before him. And whatever the cost, I have to stop him. Storm's gale was seen far and wide, and soon the X-Men have all regrouped at their friend's location. The fresh, taking care of the wounded. Feeling any better, Scott? No, not really. First time we meet this mutant X, or Proteus as he calls himself, when we get our asses handed to us. And I get taken out by Moira. More cocoa, Cyclops? No thanks, Banshee. I'll never forget the look on Moira's face. And what are we waiting for? We have to stop her. We don't know where she went, Sean. Jean now finishes wrapping Storm's arm. That's a nasty sprain, Aurora. Your arm will be useless for a few days. I do not understand, friend Kurt. What happened to you? I... I cannot explain, Peter. What about you, Wolverine? You've been pretty quiet. I got nothing to say. Leave him be, Cyclops. We have been through enough today. No. I want to hear it from him. Personally, I think he's faking it. Are you crazy? You have no idea what Proteus put us through. And you're still on your feet, while Short Stuff is shaking like a leaf over there. So he's either faking it, or he's gutless. <sighs> what? You got a problem, Wolverine? We've locked horns from the start. I think it's time we settled things between us. Without warning, Cyclops stands and throws his cup of hot chocolate over Wolverine. Hey! Face me then, or are you scared? The day I'm scared of you is the day I lay down and die. <laughs> That's more like it. What? Sorry, Wolverine. Needed to shake you out of it. Why, I oughta... Uh, you're right. Proteus shook me pretty good. But you took a hell of a risk there, leader man. Just be careful which bears you poke with those eye beams of yours. Right. Now that's settled and we're all ready to fight again. Jean, is there any way you can track him? No. Sorry, Scott. I should have told you earlier, but my powers... I... I can't track him with them either. All right, then. Wolverine, we need that nose of yours. Once we get close, you can track him. Until then, I'm afraid the only way we can trail him is by following the bodies. Cyclops' words are, at that moment, very prophetic, as a young schoolgirl is having car trouble. She thinks she is in luck when a policeman passes, but she picked the wrong car to stop. Before long, she is gone, and the being in her body hides the corpse of the taken police officer, now dry and ashen. Proteus fixes up the car's flat tire with ease and continues on his way. It's late afternoon when a bone-weary Moira McTaggart pulls up in front of an elegant Queen Street townhouse in the fashionable heart of Scotland's capital city, Edinburgh. She pushed herself to get here first. When she married Joe McTaggart, he was a Royal Marine, born and bred on Glasgow's rough Clydeside docks. He was beautiful to her then. Now he is a member of parliament, 
and a sure bet to one day become prime minister. Good evening, Wallace. Is my husband home? In his study, Mrs. McTaggart. She enters the house and heads up to the study where she finds him as promised. Moira, this is a surprise. To what do I owe the honour? Living on your isle must agree with you, my love. You look very well. I'm your wife, but not your love. Well, since you're one, the other doesn't really matter. Why are you here? I need to talk to you, Joe. Alone. Certainly. That will be all, Wallace. Thank you. A chair, Moira? A glass of whiskey? No. Suit yourself. The man walks over to his drinks table and pours himself one anyway. If it's about the divorce, the answer is still no. I find it too useful, politically, to be married to a Nobel Prize winner. If you truly loved me, Joe, you'd want to see me happy. You'd let me go. I have rich friends, now I I could just take it to court. No, who would want that kind of scandal? I mean, if people knew what you did in that lab of yours, what happened last year with the robots, where they found all those uh, dangerous mutants, you're mine, Moira. You swore before God to love, honour and cherish me till death. I intend to hold you to that. I'm here to warn you, Joe. When we said our fond farewell in New York all those years ago, you didn't just put me in the hospital for a week, you left me pregnant. You have a son, Joseph. And God have mercy on both of us, I think he's coming to Edinburgh to kill you. A son? I have a son? An ear? And you've kept him from me all these years? How dare you, woman? I... He stops in mid-sentence as Moira presses a gun to his belly. Not a move, not a word, not even a sound, Joe. Or I'll do now what I so desperately wanted to do twenty years ago. You're insane. No, Joe. Just damned. Thanks to you. You've warned me. Your conscience is clear. Now, get out. She does just that. Without another word, Moira exits back onto the street. I love the boy, Joe. I tried to teach him to love, to care, to be kind. But all he saw was the pain that you'd caused. And the hatred I felt for you eating away at my soul. Like a a maggot. I tried. Oh God, I tried. And I failed then, as I fail now. Sometime later in the dark of night. She's been here. Moira's been to see the one I hate. And again he's hurt her. I can feel it. Hello, police. This is Joe McTaggart. I want to speak to Chief Superintendent Dyke Thomas. It's urgent. I've followed that trail, that hate, that strength. And here, finally, I have found him. Come on, come on. It's taken so bloody long. Human father, I need you. Oh. My. God. Meanwhile, just outside the city limits. Okay, Jean tracked Moira here. She has to be here for a reason. (coughs) What is it, Jean? I found him, Scott. Proteus. He's killed again. We have to hurry. You heard her. No time to lose. With that... Jean uses her power to lift all of her non-flying teammates into the air as Storm and Banshee follow alongside. Back in Queen Street, meanwhile, a crowd runs in a panic as from the townhouse emerges a glowing form. That of Joe McTaggart. Moira, how kind of you to read. It makes finding you so much easier. Moira reaches into the car for her gun. But as she lifts it, it twists and turns into the form of a snake. Now, now, Moira. 
I can't let you do that. That voice. You're speaking as Joe as well now. Confused, Moira. Allow me to explain. See, when I possess people, I absorb their memories, their emotions, as well as their bodies. I know all my father knew. I felt all he felt. Never have I experienced such passion, such raw strength. This won't last me a long time. You and I are very much alike, you know. When we want, we take. When we take, we never give up. And now, Moira, what we want is you. Moira struggles as the world turns and twists around her, her car becoming a liquid surface that seems to be pulling her towards Proteus. There! Cyclops calls out from high above. Aye, that light, Joe. That has to be him. Colossus, you take point. He can't handle metal, and in your metal form... It will be done, Cyclops. Colossus transforms into his steel form and drops to the earth, charging for Proteus. Stay back! Suddenly, the street turns sideways. Colossus finds himself falling into nothingness below. But soon after, the other X-Men land and the true battle begins. Each blasting with all their might, using all their skill, all their power. They do not break through, but they watch as the shell Proteus has taken begins to break down. Look at him! The more he fights, the quicker he uses up his host body. Then we are going to give him a fight, Storm. Proteus reels. He twists and turns the world at his enemies, but cannot focus on all at once. He decides to change tactics, grabbing Moira now and putting a gun to her head. No one move, move or I'll shoot her dead. No, please stop. Stop, you're my son. I'm the woman who caged me for ten years. Stopped me from doing what I was meant to do. I will rule this world. Get away from her, you son of a- Sean, wait! Banshee does not hear him, taking to the air with a mighty sonic scream and charging for Proteus, charging to save the woman he now realizes that he loves. <coughs> Silence! Proteus reaches out his hand and the world turns again, this time liquid metal seeming to form around Banshee's neck, squeezing tight, crushing it. <coughs> The X-Men move in, Storm and Cyclops each firing their power, but before they reach him, Proteus shifts away the world so as to send their charged power blasts away from him as nothing more than harmless liquid. This allows Wolverine to get close and swing for him. But Proteus notices just in time to send Wolverine's claws twisting and warping away into nothingness as well. Proteus! You may control reality, but I control the universe! Face me! With a mighty cry, the Phoenix Force blasts at Proteus. He tries, but even he cannot hold back its force as it overcomes him. He changes enough to stop it vaporizing him, but he grows weak as he throws up every psychic shield he has but the distraction allows Wolverine to grab and retrieve Moira, taking her to safety on the side of the street. No! You will not stop me! I will have her! Behind them, Storm now finally is able to free Banshee as the vision drops. Sean falls to his knees and gasps for air. <gasps> Banshee, are you okay? Are you hurt? Banshee finally looks up at her. He tries to speak, and can't. His voice, not even a whisper. Meanwhile, Proteus now changes the world again, grabbing Moira with a liquid tentacle, and then raising both her and himself up on a huge portion of the ground itself. Raising it higher and higher until they are both over 20 feet in the air and surrounded by walls of a stone castle like those built in this island's past. Well, I'll say this. He has an imagination. I got him! But before she can take off, Jean's world changed again. She goes mad. And this time, not due to Proteus. No! No! 
not now! She cries out and falls to the earth. In her mind, she is in a royal-sized bed, sleeping. In her all-too-familiar manor home. A day's rest earned. What? No! Cyclops rushes to her side. No! Wake up! Snap out of it, Jean! We need you! No one else has the power to beat him! I do. All right, go for it, Colossus. Get to the castle, do whatever needs to be done. Don't hold back. I shall not fail. Peter reaches out with all his might, (laughs) climbing one massive stretched out arm's reach at a time, using all his strength until he reaches the summit's peak. When he is able to climb onto the castle's ramparts, he fears he is too late, as the now decomposing body of McTaggart bounds towards Moira. I was wrong. This battle has won this body out. I need a new one. Yours will have to do. Mother. No! With a yell and a clang, Colossus tackles him to the ground. They struggle for a moment until Proteus is able to twist and reform himself before Colossus. He stands tall, but his time in this form has run out. The body of Joseph McTaggart dies falls away and leaves only a blinding white humanoid shape of light. Now I see your true form, monster. Surrender while you have the chance. He does not. Instead, the shape of light expands, forms and begins to create an electrical storm the likes of which the world has never seen, and one that could certainly end it for many. So be it. With a mighty yell, Colossus swings and drives both his metal fists with full force into the heart of the storm. A loud explosion. A final cry. And then, all grows silent. The world around them all reforming and returning to its original state. Is it over? He did it! Peter did it! Yes, he did. The group stand, gathering themselves and coming back together on the Scotland Street. What? Scott? Where am I? You blacked out again. No, I I was in... Never mind. Like I said, I, I don't know what is happening to me. But we will find out. Together. Yes. Yes, we will. With that, she smiles at him, the two then embracing in an impassioned kiss. Across the street, Colossus now holds Moira tight in an embrace. Is he gone? Uh, I'm only picking up a faint trace of him. Do not worry, Cyclops. He is gone. I know he was evil. I know what had to be done. And yet, I mourn. Ah. Moira, I have no words to comfort you, only my strength. Do not hold back tears. I shall not rust. Sean, are you okay? I can barely speak. My, my, my voice. I'm sure it will heal, my friend. Moira. Sean stands and now rushes over to her. Moira. Are you okay, lass? No. She meets to embrace him in a tight hug. Pa will be. The group now all embrace each other and collect themselves, finally being able to claim victory, but at a high cost. I love them both. Part of me is glad they're gone. The rest of me is numb. I can only hope that the Lord will forgive me for my part in all of this. He will. That is what he does. At that moment, on the far side of the city. You survived. Good. I never doubted it. Though I had to be sure you didn't try anything heroic. We have risked too much for you, Jean Grey. We will be seeing you very, very soon. My Black Queen.